Hey y'all, this video is going to be about Unity Muse behavior, uh, which is where you can create things like behavior trees and state machine like logic and essentially node based program a lot of your behaviors and mechanisms that you want your NPCs or non player characters to leverage when deciding on what they should be doing next. So for someone like me who has no real programming uh, background, this is a very valuable tool. However, I will say before we dive in that this is probably the most programming leaning tool of all of them from my perspective. So it does require an amount of understanding of logic cycles and some basic if then statements, things like enumerators, what are floats, what are integers, etc. Um, so without further ado, let's dive in. The first thing that I want to do is create a project in 22 LTS, and I'm going to use the URP sample demos. So I'm going to go ahead and make this a my project, and we're going to dive in. I'll see you over there, and we'll go through how to get behavior into your project. All right, so we've launched our project. I'm going to close out of this, and luckily it's going to be as simple as coming back to this site that we were just looking at, clicking on Get Started, and then once this window opens, hitting install the behavior package. Then I'm going to allow for Chrome to open the Unity editor where it will open up Pac-Man for me and it will add in the name that I need to search. So yes, you can do this manually as well. Uh, com.unity.muse.behavior. I'm going to go ahead and hit add and this is going to install in here. So what I want to do to preface uh, our objectives is I want to go into one of these URP maps. I tend to really like the garden, so maybe we'll use the garden. Uh, and I want to walk around as a character and add in some AI that's just a patrolling enemy. So for this example that we're going to spend 10 minutes on, I'm just going to drop a sphere into the environment. Uh, the nice thing is that scene is already all lit and it has the light probes in the scene, so I don't need to redo lighting or any of that. Uh, while this thing is patrolling, I'm going to set it up so that if I approach it and get within X amount of feet, it's going to trigger an alarm or something similar and stop its patrol, stop what it's doing. And we'll probably call it a day at that. So that feels like more than enough to get in and uh, at least start to understand what behavior does and how it works. So behavior has now been installed, as we can see here. Once you have it, one thing that you can do is to install the samples I don't really want to use the sample scene or any of that today, so I'm just going to dive in directly. So I'm going to go into our scenes, open up the garden, and open up the garden scene. And from within here, we're going to let the textures and materials load. And I'm just going to save things within this folder here. Um, one main thing that I want to do is to right click, and you'll notice up here in the animate, uh, demo that we did. There was a window up top for Muse. Uh, there is no such thing with the behavior. So with behavior, you have to right click in the project. You have to go to create. And then under Muse behavior, I can create a behavior graph. And I'm going to say this is called enemy AI. And when we double click on that, we're going to see a very simple window. Basically what we're looking at is a blackboard, which is all of our public variables, if you will, that you can add in. Instead of typing direct integers into boxes, you can have variables that you can then adjust from outside of the uh, behavior graph itself. You then have the inspector, which gives you some more information about whatever node you have picked. And, uh, and that's basically it. It's very simple. You right click to add in new nodes. Um, just to point out, if you're using uh, some of the AI capability, you can also create a branch from text and do things like uh, enemy game object will patrol between waypoints and stop when I get within five meters. Then will trigger an alarm. So if I were to use generative AI, this could come in here and create my node network for me and my branch. Um, I'm just going to run this once so that we can see 
how this would start to set me up. So it sets me up as a sequence. It has an agent patrolling along waypoints and then does a, is the distance between self and the target below X. Um, I'm going to delete this out a, because this isn't exactly how I want to do it. And B, because there's some amount of programming that I think I would need to do to implement this logic the way that it's laid out here. Um, so what I'm going to do instead is do something very simple. And I'm going to right click and say add action move and patrol. And now from here in the on start, I can drag this down. And I'm basically just saying here, hey, my AI that I've assigned this script to, I want to patrol along these waypoints. And you'll notice that this is currently open and looking for a game object. So what I can do is hit the chain next to agent and say self. So you can have it be self uh, reflective um, or you could have it assign a different game object in here. You can also override that in the inspector in the actual uh, Unity editor window. And then within the waypoints, when I click on the chain, it's gonna say, hey, you don't have a list here. Do you want to make one? I'm going to say yes, call it WP for waypoints. And now I have the logic set up for self patrolling along waypoints. So I'm just going to control S to ensure that everything is working as intended. Come into my scene view. And I'm going to go ahead and create a 3D sphere. All right, so our sphere is created. I'm gonna drag it over towards our environment and bring it down here to about the height of a, uh, an NPC or something similar. And now to get your behavior to operate on this AI, the easiest way to do that is just to hit add component and then type in behavior. And now we can do a behavior graph agent. So I'm gonna click on that and then I'm going to drag my behavior graph up here and you're going to see that it has a few public facing variables. It's already assigned sphere to self because it's uh, self referencing. Again, if we didn't have it self referencing, then it would just be looking for a game object here. And then the list being empty here, I can essentially add in as many waypoints as I need. I can also do that from within the graph menu, but just for the sake of uh, showing this demo once, I'm going to do it from here. I'm going to lock out my inspector and I'm going to drag in a few interesting pieces of this map to have this, uh, this little sphere person walking around to a few different large rocks and just doing essentially a big rectangle. Okay. So we now have our elements set. I'm going to control S to save the scene and then Theoretically, when I hit play, it should all run. I'm going to set this to repeat and I'm going to hit play. So now if I look up, we should see our sphere. Ah, we do not see our sphere moving and I can tell you exactly why. So in here, when I click on the patrol node, you'll see that in the inspector, it has different variables. So I want the speed to be something like, let's say three. Um, so that it is going to move instead of zero as it just was, which means it will not move at all. And now we'll see our sphere actually patrolling. So remember to always hop into that inspector and make sure that you are happy with what you're seeing there. So now our sphere patrols, I'm happy with that. I really love that the lighting is, is impacting it. So it's a dynamic object leveraging those uh, light probes. Fantastic. So all of that works. The next thing that I want to do is essentially say, while you're patrolling, I also want you to be checking for if I'm within X amount of meters. So I'm going to say add action conditional and check distance. And here I can say essentially that I want these to run simultaneously. So what we're going to say here is run in parallel until any succeeds. And that way, when one of these succeeds, being our distance, our distance check rather, um, it will stop the patrol. So this agent will stop and pay attention to me. So is the distance between agent, agent being self, because this is applied to the AI, and me. So I'm going to say 
player. You could also do this by searching uh, for the tag, like player tag up here. Uh, but I'm just going to drag in the game object and we're going to say, is it below five meters or five units? The way that this works is essentially once one, one of these succeeds, it will stop working and each of them are going to trigger. And if it fails the trigger, it's going to more or less get stuck into the fail state. So I need to tell each of these to repeat themselves so that they don't get stuck into that. So I'm going to hit add flow and just add a simple repeat over here on the right. And then I want to add flow and add a repeat until success over here. And if this was, for example, just a repeat indefinitely, um, it would just continue repeating and the agent would continue to move along and it would uh, get a little wonky. So the next thing that I want to do is to essentially say, if we are within this amount of space, I then want to set the alarm object to active. So I'm gonna say this is a new object. I'm gonna call it the alarm, set it to active and hit save. And now I can exit out of that, come back into my sphere, which is over here as we still have the inspector locked off. I'm gonna go ahead and unlock that inspector. And let's say in my FPS controller, I want to drag the uh, player capsule over to player override. And I want to add in something like a basic cube that will be my alarm. So let's say the cube is roughly above the head of this enemy. I'm gonna shrink it a bit and maybe I'll add on kind of a cool material. And we can drag the alarm material on, take it to, let's say red, make it emissive and crank that up one or two times. And then I want the cube to move with the sphere, but I want the cube to in its default state be turned off. And now I can hit control S and now just walking through the logic. So on start, we're going to run in parallel until any succeeds. We're going to repeat simultaneously in parallel that the self will patrol along the waypoints and that we'll be doing a distance check until the alarm state is set to on from the distance check returning a value under five which will then stop the repeat, which will then stop this parallel execution and our agent will stop moving. So let's hit play, see if what we've set up works. And if so, we'll call this a success and we will see that our sphere is properly patrolling. And when we get to him, that he begins patrolling again. So slightly unexpected behavior. I believe if we walk through what's happening, and actually this is a great opportunity to showcase what debugging looks like, is I can hit play here, and in my debugger, inside of the enemy AI graph, I'm going to hit sphere, and I can see what is happening. So now that we've ran in parallel once, and the process of the distance has gone through and set the alarm, the repeat on start is now triggering the patrol over and over again. So what I would likely do, frankly, is I would coordinate this in some sort of state. Um, I will show very briefly what that looks like, but then I'm going to delete it uh, because for the sake of this tutorial, actually, there's a much more simple solution. <laughs> um, but if I want to come in here and do a switch, um, I could come in here and create a whole system. Um, so it's looking for an enum. I can come down here and do an enumerator, a uh, new enum type. We'll call this AI enemy state. And then what I could do would be to have a few different states. And let's say one is um, idle, one is alarm, and one is attacking me. So now I could hit create. I'll create that. And then what I would be able to do is over here, it's gonna compile scripts in the background very briefly. 
But then I could, and the reason why I don't want to go deep down this path is because it would require some programming, I believe, to transfer between states appropriately. But you can now see what this has done for me is it's created three different states. And now within each state, I can be triggering different things and have a state expire and go back to the primary switch. Um, so that's probably a better way of doing it if we were to spend a long time on this. Instead, I'm going to do one simple action, which is I'm going to turn off repeat, meaning we're going to patrol along the waypoints on repeat down here. And then we're going to over here, have a distance check and turn on the alarm. All right, so let's check this out now that we've made that change. So repeat is no longer continuing to trigger the patrol and it should stop right where it's at. Oh no, I've been spotted. Some pretty cool behavior from our NPC here. And now because I have no state to help it leave uh, and no step after this stopping of what we're looking at here because I've entered that uh, perimeter, it does nothing. So it will be stuck there until we tell it what to do next. I'm gonna call it for the uh, tutorial video today. I just wanted to highlight some of the cool functionality in here, um, but did wanna make sure that we all walk through Muse behavior, understand what it does, how it works. There's so much more that goes into this specific tool than I'm capable of going into. Um, just because the more you can get in and start actually doing some custom code, the better off you are. I appreciate you watching. I hope you learned something. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.